Hey gang, how's it going? As promised, another video. This one's going to be all about GraphQL mutations with Reason Apollo hooks. It's going to be really quick and really easy. So let's get straight into it. Let's go smash out some code. Okay, so we're going to create a new page called Create Post. It is a React uh, component. If you've watched the last video, you'll see that this is very familiar. It is almost identical. We're using our user context, uh, use user hook to retrieve the user details. We're uh, running our pattern matching against the uh, user variant that is returned. If it's a guest, well then they're unauthorized. Um, if it is uh, authenticated type, then we take the user details that we stored against it and we call the get author bar ID uh, GraphQL query that we created in the last lesson to actually grab the uh, author details. So. Um, if, if it's a valid author, then we pattern match that. We actually say um, return a post form. The post form we created in a couple of uh, videos ago as well. So if you haven't watched that, please do. Uh, if it's not an author, then we just display, sorry, you're not an author. So jumping over into the post form, a few additions that we've made now since the last video. This time we're going to create our uh, mutation. So we're gonna run a GraphQL mutation when we hit submit. So we open Apollo hooks. Uh, we define our post mutation here. And the mutation takes a few arguments being the title, the body, uh, some tags, which will be an array of strings and the post author ID that we've just passed in, which we've just retrieved from that GraphQL query here. So you can see a post form, we're passing in this author ID here. Further down here, we pass our post mutation definition into the Apollo hooks use mutation hook. This returns a tuple. The one that we're interested in now is the first item of that tuple is the post mutation. So when we actually sub click submit on the form, uh, rather than just logging the results to the console, which we did last time, we're going to actually uh, run that mutation and we're going to pass in some variables, which are the form variables, uh, the title, uh, state.title, state.body, uh, the tags. I've called this JS string uh, function, which will simply uh, convert comma separated string into an array of strings. You can see the first argument there is the comma token. And of course, the final argument is the actual author ID. Uh, this will return a promise. We're going to uh, pattern match the result of that promise. So um, the, there's a few variant options that, um, that get returned from the Apollo hooks mutation, one of them being the data. If everything is fine, then we get the data. Um, I'm using, again, the buckle script belt option library uh, to to sort of pass that data and check that it's valid. I'm not actually doing with anything with, with this value um, other than to show you this is what happens. This is the result that's returned. You can see here, I'm actually asking for it to return some values and this is how I'm handling it. So the map with default method we've seen before, I'm saying, well, default just um, return this empty stub which I've defined up here. Uh, otherwise, if I've got a valid item, let's map it to these values here. But you can see I'm not actually doing anything with it. And finally, notify on success. We've seen this again in previous videos if everything's fine. Uh, the other possible states is uh, loading. I'm just ignoring the result there. Error. I'm going to uh, run a notify on failure. And um, this unexpected server error is something that I've defined here in the post form config. So what that's going to do now is that if um, if everything is fine, this notification is taking the form status. So these functions here, again, we, we talked about this previously, uh, will set the form status to successful. If it's, um, oh, sorry, submitted or, or, or submission failed, it'll either display a success message or an error message, depending on, uh, depending on what happens. And that's really it. So it's actually really simple. There's, there's not a hell of a lot to it. So if we jump over to the application, we can see I've only got the three posts here. I can head over to the create post page that we've created previously and create a new post. And we hit submit, we should see the success message. Blog post has been saved. If we go back to this page and refresh, we should see our blog post there. 
excelente. And that is all, really quick one. So as promised, that was super quick and easy. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, you know the drill. If you did, like, subscribe, leave a comment. You can also join me on Patreon, which I've now set up. And uh, we'll see you in the next video. Have a good one.